Good morning on this wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it no matter the circumstances, no matter the temperature outside, be it rain, sunshine, hot or cold, it is a day that the Lord has made. And every day with Jesus, as the songwriter said, is sweeter than the day before. Every day is another opportunity to give God total praise and honor. This 27th day of December, 2020, we are going into the fifth part of our lesson that we've been going through for, for five weeks. This will be the fifth week now of salvation is safe. And once saved, always saved. And we're dealing primarily with the grace of God in this lesson, which is in all of them. That's where salvation is safe. But his, this one, we will see how amazing his grace is. Coming from the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses five through nine. The Ephesians the second chapter, verses five through nine. Verse five says, I'm reading from the original King James Version of God's Holy Writing. Even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, you're saved. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, going into this, we're thinking about amazing grace. One of the members sent me a text the other day and she was expressing how much the grace of God meant to her. And when the church sings the song Amazing Grace, how how powerful it is. And, and that's all I, my mind would focus on and, and couldn't get my mind away from how amazing the grace of God is. When John Newton wrote wrote those words and and and. Through in that third stanza of amazing grace, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Just means so much to a person that that is going through, that have been through, and and see that they're still on the battlefield for the Lord, and still trusting in the Lord and know that it wasn't of their own goodness that got them there, that it was the grace of God. And the Apostle Paul is here, as we said, talking to the church at Ephesus, talking about, about the wonderful, the wonderful and powerful grace of God. And he started this, this particular chapter out telling us that we were dead in trespasses and sins. The, the, the sins are things that we may not even know that we're doing, but we were dead because of our link to Adam. And, and we, we come into this, this life already in a dead state. And we were dead in, in, sin, in those sins, but also in trespasses. When we do wrong, even though we see the law is stated, that just as when you go on to someone's property, after you see the sign there saying, Trust, no trespasses, but yet you still cross the fence and with your hunting rifle and go and shoot down some deer in their in their pasture because you just want to, and that's that's trespassing. Then that is knowing the law of this land, and you chose to go against it. That's that's what the apostle Paul said that that these people were. We were all at this state of mind. We were sometimes in these positions. But now he looks at this and he has started that fourth verse and we didn't go there because that'll be another, another topic. But God, who is rich in mercy for his grace, loved wherein he loved us for his great love wherein he loved us. He, he loved us. And even when we were dead in sin, he has quickened us together. The things that he would use the word together three times in the, in these two verses, the fifth and the sixth verse. And he says that we have been quickened together with Christ. He has 
made us alive with Christ. How did he make us alive with Christ? When Christ died on the cross, when, when he died, that was a emblematic of us dying with Christ. All of us that would trust him and believe in him, and the word will come later by faith, we will be, be saved. We will be dead with him and even raised with him. It brought to life with Christ. The day that Christ was raised to life, everyone that trusted in the fact that he did, they were raised to life that day also. They were quickened. Even though they were dead in trespasses and sins before they came to Christ, now they have been made alive. That's what quickened means together. Together with Christ. Christ. When he got up from the grave, they did too. We call it baptism when we do this symptomatically in the church, when we go in and submerge a person into water and bring them up into the newness of life it, the, to bury them under the water, but bring them up into life. And we, we call that the baptism, but this is the, the spiritual baptism. When Christ died, we died with him. And now we are brought up together with Christ. And then the Apostle Paul decided to throw this in there with the, the, this letter to the church at Ephesus. He said, by grace, are ye saved? He wanted to throw that in there, even though he would reiterate on this later on. He said at this point, by grace, are ye saved? I want you to know that this is an unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor uh, is how you were saved. T telling these these people that at this time. Then he goes into this. He says, and has raised us together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has raised us, he, the Lord, has raised us together, us up together, and, and has made us to sit together in heavenly places. We are raised with Christ. When he got up from the grave, we are made alive. Now we are raised up with, together with him, and then we are made to sit together in, high, in heavenly places. How, how? In Christ Jesus. Because of what Christ Jesus did, we are able to be, we are raised and are sitting already. Look at this. Has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ. This is not something that's going to happen later on. Now, we know the reality of it when we will feel the presence of it will be later on. But right now, a person that has trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, their life has already started. They are already made alive. And what we're trying to solidify here is the fact that your salvation is saved because the things that are being talked about here at this time tells you that these things are not going to be taken back because you are already made alive. This has already happened. You have already been quickened. You have already been made alive. And he's not going to take that life that he gave you because this is life that he gave you because of his son, Jesus Christ. And, and it, this is, you have been raised because of his son, Jesus Christ. And now we are made to sit together in heavenly places because of Jesus Christ also. In, in That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. In the ages to come, whether it's here on this earth or in the, the heavenly realms, we, he'll be able to show because even in this realm, Someone will look at you that know that you are saved, that, that, that look at you and say, wait a minute, that has to be an awesome God. It's all by his grace. They'll realize that you looking at you, they may not see anything that's totally different from what they saw before other than the fact that they'll say it's something about you. You know what it is about you because you know that you have been saved. And if you tell them that you're saved when they ask you, they'll be wondering how can a God save a person that is just like that, that has to be awesome. And But it's not for you. It's so that you'll be able, they'll be able to see his exceeding riches toward you. They'll be able to see his great kindness toward you and me as saved people through the blood of Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For by grace, you are saved through faith and not of yourselves is the gift of God. Now, 
He goes into this these these popular scriptures that we know so much about here. For by grace, it is by this grace, this unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, are you saved through faith. Faith is not what saved you, but it is the instrument to get you to the grace, to that thing that did save you. As we, we often make the statement of a person jumping out of a building and jumping down back years ago when the firemen would hold out the, the little jumping bed or, or the, 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 the trampoline-like thing, it, it, and they only see smoke. And then someone way back tells them to jump. They're going, they're going to catch you. The jump is not what saved you. It's the trampoline below that saves you that the firemen are holding and it bounces you up and, and, say, and your life is saved. So you're looking and it would take an act of faith for you to jump and you can't even see the end results of it. You, you can only see sidewalk and pavement where you're looking from. But when you jump, they catch you on the other end. And that is faith that got you to the grace. So the Apostle Paul here said, it is by grace, it is this unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor that God got you to this point. So why do we say that 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 it is it is such such a powerful thing? Well, last week we went to the Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter and the 16th verse. So we, we look at this and and I, I've been reading and some people and, and it always comes up and 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 that's how works come into the plan of salvation and people miss what God has done for us, how powerful the salvation experience is, because we'll get to thinking that we've done something. But look at this. This is think thinking that that we've done something too. We, when we when we look beyond what's what's on the scripture, we, we look to the scripture there in the gospel according to St. John, the third the the third chapter, the sixteenth verse, when we think of his love. And people will say that all the time, that I'm saved by his love, and he saved me by his love. And we have to tell them as believers right away that if you think that you have been saved by love, you may need to go and check to see if you're truly saved because he didn't even tell you that. But his love did prompt him to do because God cannot, as Dr. McGee would say, bring you in the back door of heaven and to, to save your life. But God did make a provision to pay off the sin debt so that he could bring you through the front door and that's through the person of Jesus Christ. So it is by grace. It is a gift. It is something that God gives to us that we don't deserve. Now, we already understood with the verse, verse that, that wasn't in our, our, our text that we talked about today. We talked about who is rich in mercy. He's already merciful because he didn't exact the punishment on us that sin demanded because of the grace. He gave us this wonderful gift, this gift, this unmerited. We can't earn it. We can't. We can't get to the point where we can work for it. And how did we get there? We got to this grace by faith. The hymnologist says we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed me yet. And this, this is how we get to this point. We get to this point by, by, by faith. We get to that grace by what we believe. You ask a person that, and, and you try to get a person from the, that salvation. Well, if they still trust the fact that the Lord saved them it, the, before it's everlasting too late, if you, they still believe those things that happened years ago when they trusted the Lord, yes, you saw them walk off the beating path. You saw them when they were probably in a backslidden state, but God didn't throw them out of heaven because the things that happened to them, that they, they already happened. They were already made alive. They were already raised and they were already seated 
with God and Christ together there in heaven because they've already trusted. So Jesus is there just as he represented us when he died for our sins, paying the propitiation, the righteous wrath of God. When he did that, he's also our representative now in heaven because he's sitting at the right hand of his father, ever making intercession for you and me. So it is by grace through faith, ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It is not of yourself. You can't do this. You, you and I didn't do this. It, and because if we tried, the scripture tells us in the, the 103rd number of Psalms, the 10th verse, he has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He hadn't dealt with us because of our sins. All of us that have trusted him and believed in him, he didn't deal with us because of our sin. Because if he did, we would be cast out forever and ever from his presence. We'll be separated from the Lord forever. So it's not of ourselves. He didn't deal with our, our, us after our, uh, because of our sins, nor reward us according to our sins. But And not of ourselves. We didn't do it, or not of yourselves. It, it wasn't anything that you did. It's not you and your works plus the Lord Jesus Christ because that wouldn't work in heaven because God would not share his glory with anyone. If Jesus did it, if he died for your sins and you were able to die for your sins, at, at, why would Jesus have to die? So, the, the, the Apostle Paul said it in, in Galatians, the second chapter, verse 21. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If you were able to keep the law, if you were able to do works, good works, and get you saved, then what, what was the purpose of Jesus coming to die for? And if you were able to do it, then you probably would do something else. And that's in that night verse. But this is a gift of God. This is something that God gave you as a gift. A gift is something that you didn't work for. If you work for it, you it, this is payment for what you have done. But if the Lord gives it to you, then it is a gift. A gift. If it's under the tree and, and you got it out from under the tree, tree last, last, last week, on the 25th, and you got that, and you open it up, and you didn't pay for it, then it was a gift. If you paid for it, then it was something that you get, you did that you paid for. It. It's it's not a gift. It, you knew you actually knew what it was if you bought it for yourself. You can call it a gift if you want to, but you paid for it. It is the gift of God. And then verse nine says, "Not of works, lest any man should boast." If a man was able to say that I was able to get there because of my works or because of my goodness, mind you that the scripture clearly states that there is none righteous, no, not one. And, and if we were able to get there because of that, then we would have reason to boast. And then others will look and say, well, I'm not, why am I not able to do it? So the Lord left us in a position because of his unmerited favor that we are, we are all dependent and totally dependent on him. We, we, he's not going to share his glory with anyone. So we are, we're left in this state where we have to trust the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins and he has us saved and safe. And once we get to that point, he's not going to send us out He's not going to take life that he put placed in us. That is That was taken the first time when Adam sinned, that, that life, that, that original life. But now he has made, given us a spiritual life, and he's not going to take it back. He's not like we are. He, he gave it to us, and it's ours to keep throughout eternity. He's not going to take the fact that we have been raised with Christ Jesus when he got up from the grave, when we trusted the fact that he got up from the grave, when his father raised him up, and he's not going to send us that are already seated together in heavenly places out from that heavenly place. He has us saved and safe. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. If you did work, how much work could you do? Well, the scripture is telling us 
is not of works. If it was the work of the law, then you, you would have reason to boast. But there is no reason for us to boast in this. Yes, we are created unto good works, the next verse would tell us. But at this point, our salvation is tied up in the person of Jesus Christ and his grace is truly amazing. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds and help us to understand that it is by grace that we are saved through faith. And faith is the instrument to get us to this. Let us all trust Jesus Christ today, Lord, as our Savior. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.